love you. We love you. We love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to thee because you cared for me way up on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. James chapter 5. And we are going to start with chapter 7. I mean verse 7. <laughs> Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early, early and latter rain. Be ye patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have been at the end of the Lord, and the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any oath, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. If any man among you is afflicted, let him pray. Is any married, let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil, in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if any have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray, one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Amen. Okay, we're going to stop there for right now. And we're going to get into what the Lord wants us to be mindful of. We know we're in the last days, right? We know that things are winding up and they're getting crazier and crazier by the minute. All the different agendas that they have on the media, everything that's going on. Some of us, even our families, are at odds against one another. Some of the people that we've known for years or we've been friends with for 10, 20, 30 decades, I mean, yeah, 10, 20, 30 years, or two, two or three decades. We have been close friends or close in relationship with relatives or people in our church. But somehow, things seem to fall apart. Some little thing, some little pimple will break up a friendship in a minute. Some little annoyance or offense will break up a relationship in a family. And the crazy thing is, we know it's the work of the enemy because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We understand that. So the thing we have to remember is no matter what goes on, God is in control. Not the devil, not people, not systems. You hear what I'm saying? So what we have to remember is no matter what, God wants us to maintain that joy. And we know the Bible says, the presence in the presence of the Lord, there is joy. We know that. There is strength in his presence. There is joy. There is peace. And he will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him. So knowing that no matter what comes to ruffle our feathers, no matter what comes to rattle our cage, no matter what threats come from the enemy, threats against our health, threats against our life, against our circumstances, no matter what, 
we know if we are in Christ and Christ is in us, we have the favor of God. God is for us, not against us. So we can always hold our head up high. And when Satan tries to accuse you, when Satan tries to discourage you, when the powers that be try to bring your spirits down, you remind Satan of the end of the story. You remind him of who the real victor is. And if you're in Christ, you are victorious as well. So know that God's love will cover you. God's love covers the multitude of sin. And we know that we have an advocate on our side. What's his name? Jesus Christ. That's right. We know that. So we know that whatever comes down the pipe, we don't have to panic. If there's a food shortage, we don't have to panic. Why? If God took care of the children of Israel who moaned and murmured and complained and fussed and fumed, how much more will he take care of us? How much more? If we can't get water from the pipes, we can get water from a rock. If we can't access our medication, God will regulate our body. He will cause our faith to soar in order to gain the things we need. Remember the multitude, the fishes and the loaves? The miracles. We have to read God's word and remind ourselves of the miracles God did back in the day. And if he did it back then, how much more will he do it to us? You know, we always call the Jews the chosen people. But what really was going on was God chose a man. And that man originally was a Gentile. That was Abraham. So he blessed his lineage, which became the nation of Israel. So we, being in Christ, are the chosen people in Christ. We haven't replaced the Jews, but we are the chosen people in Christ. So just remember that if you're wrapped up in God's love, God loves you. God is for you. God is not against you. He knows the plans he has for you. Plans to bless you and not harm you. Know that. Every time something comes to bring a threat, remember who God says you are. Remember whose you are. You're under the blood. When Satan attacks you at night, Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. You have the authority. You have the name of Jesus working on your behalf. You have the right to wield that name as a weapon. And the demons will have to go. When your body starts to hurt, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Rebuke the pain. Rebuke the attack against your body. When fear strikes you and you feel like, oh no, what's going to happen? Rebuke that fear because it works opposite to your faith. So you can't have both. You have to have one or the other. And when you're struggling, ask God for help. He'll help you. He understands. He knows the infirmities. He is touched with the infirmities. You hear what I'm saying? So know that no matter what, God is for you. If God be for you, what's the rest of that scripture? Who can be against you? That's right. I remember something. I'm proud of myself. She, she said, I remember something. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> That's right. Who can be against you? That's right. So no matter what, in spite of what's going on, if we can keep ourselves in the most holy faith, if we can keep ourselves in the walk of holiness, See, that's one of the things we don't hear a lot of nowadays because everybody wants to do it's your thing, it's your thing, do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. That's the way we want to believe in this world. But we are in Christ and we know it's not our thing, it's not your thing, it's not my thing, it's his thing. It's his program. And that's the program we abide by, his word. And what enables us to abide by his word is the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That's where we get the power. So when somebody wants to come up against you and disrespect you, you can call on the power of the Holy Spirit to help you to keep your mouth shut when you want to fly it open and tell them a piece of your mind. 
<laughs> That's what you can do. You have the power. So knowing no matter what comes against us, we know that we have an advocate. Now, one of the things God says, no matter what's going on, the things we have to be careful of, is we have to be careful not to judge others. We have to be careful not to look down on this one, that one, the other one. And maybe they're confused. Maybe they, they don't dress that well. Maybe they, they talk funny. Maybe they stutter. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be careful not to look down and cast judgment on a person. Not to be a sower of discord. Do you know what, you know what she said about me? <laughs> we can't do that. We have to be careful. Yeah, it's funny sometimes you don't even realize you do it. Exactly. We all get tempted to do that at times. But we have to remember not to. We have to remember to 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 know how to treat our brothers and sisters in Christ and those who are out of Christ. Because if a person who's out of Christ comes up against you and disrespects you, you can win them to the Lord by the way you carry yourself. Yes, the reaction is not the trial that causes the problem. It's the reaction to the, the trial that counts. That's what God is looking at. Not if we're tempted, not if we're hurt, not if we get angry. He's looking at what do you do with that? Casting all your care on him because he cares for you. So when you feel that dander rising and that heat coming up under your collar. <laughs> what did you, Jesus do? <laughs> there you go. And you feel the horns growing out of your head. <laughs> That's you. when it's time to say, oh, okay, Lord, help me. Definitely help me right over. now. Help me, Lord. <laughs> Don't let Jack jump out the box. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have to do. So just remember, I'm going to read the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 1, and then we're done. Okay, i got to find it, so give me a second. <laughs> okay, here we are. Thank you, Lord. 14. As obedient, this is uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation does not just mean what comes out of your mouth. Conversation includes your attitude, your carriage, your behavior, your heart. Exactly. Would you like to add to that what conversation means? Yeah, well, we just, just have to uh, just remember all the all times you was in church. Yes, you got to remember. Because mm -hmm. if you forget, here comes Dad. Yep, really fast. <laughs> we, know we, we know we're ready. We really, all we know we're ready if we're going to run around too, you know. Right. Before we even think about doing it. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, let me read the next verse. 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, living on the earth. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with the corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by traditions from your father, from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, what I want to say about that is sometimes we think that the things our relatives, our fathers, or people who trained us do, sometimes we think that that is the way to go. But there are times, and there will be times, because we are all imperfect and we have this treasure in earth and vessels where you're going to see somebody fall flat on their face. And they may want you to join in with them. You see that guy over there? Oh, you know what he said about me? He disrespect. I'm using an example. He disrespected me. <laughs> he disrespected me. He said this about me, and he said that about me. Now, if you 
join in with me, you're, you're joining in with my sin. Oh, yeah, right. Right, because I'm talking about him like he's got two tails. No, just yeah, 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 right. So, but sometimes the best way to handle something like that is what somebody told me one day. I don't think this conversation is glorifying God. That shuts it right there, doesn't it? <laughs> that shuts it right there. You have shown them your example without putting them down. Mm -hmm. But you cause them to look up above their own nonsense. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So anyway, I just want to say a prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. And we ask you, Lord, if there's any sin in our hearts that we're not aware of, forgive us, Father. Cleanse us. Purify us. We also ask you, Lord, to fill us afresh on a daily basis. Fill her up every day with your Holy Spirit. Give us the power of your anointing, your love, the mind of Christ, the heart of God. And we thank you, Lord. Help us to bear fruits of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. And we commit our lives to you daily. In the name of Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Two years, 54. Really? Years. Can I take a picture of you? Sure. Be nice. They've been married 54 years? 53. 53. 53. Aww, 53. that's beautiful. So say hi. Yes. Hi, Tira. <laughs> I love it.